Hey everybody, Adam O'Hearn here, aka The Cad Junkie. Today we're looking at part one of our new Porsche 911 in SolidWorks series. That is the wheel and tire portion of the tutorial, and it is going to be wicked. It is a lot of fun. We're going to start with some really nice reference imagery uh, that I found online, as well as real-world specs that I looked up. And we're going to do it in such a way that uh, if those specifications turned out to be ever so slightly wrong in one way or another, then those would be really really easy to update and fix. However, not every single thing in a parametric CAD document needs to be nailed down, and that is a great myth and something that's going to save you a ton of time if you can understand. So I actually have this spider sense uh, <laughs> after many years of working in parametric CAD for when I can cut corners and when I can't. That's one of those things we're going to try to cover in this series. We're going to talk about what kinds of things really need to be nailed down and what kinds of things we can get away with kind of just slap dashing together to make them look nice in the final model. Now you will notice that uh, here in this series we're going to work primarily with solid modeling techniques, despite the fact that most automotive CAD is done using surface modeling techniques. The reason for that is because I actually did it both ways before recording, and I found that uh, with, with this specific wheel, I could do it in uh, less than half as many features and less than half as much time using solid modeling as opposed to surface modeling. However, there are certain areas on this design, like the one I'm showing right now, where surfacing is necessary, and I'm going to show you some really nice techniques for getting that done efficiently without a whole lot of trimming and splitting and deleting faces and stitching things back together. We're going to do it in a very quick, efficient, clean way. Now in this series, we are also going to model the tire, which is possibly the most fun part of the entire thing because we're going to include all kinds of extemporaneous and uh, completely unnecessary data, really mainly just uh, just to sell the image in the final visuals. It makes such a difference to have lots of little details because it really helps make the image look that much more real. And we're going to do it in a way that is compatible with configurations in SolidWorks. You see, we have to use this wheel in both the front and back of the car. And that's a 245 in the front for the width and a 305 in the rear for the width, and uh, we need to be able to change that, preferably in a very non-redundant way. That's what configurations are going to allow us to do. So everything that we do here is going to be nailed down in such a way that we can have those configurations to uh, easily implement that in both, uh, both sets of wheels on our car. Now, there are going to be some mistakes made along the way, and I am going to include those in their grisly detail, because I think it's really helpful to understand that uh, working in SOLIDWORKS is never going to be a linear process. There's going to be back and forth and learning as we go. Should be a lot of fun. We'll see you soon. 